<laughs> hey, man. I mean, I mean, there shouldn't be too much happening in the first two or three minutes, so go for it. <laughs> yeah, so we basically decided because I'm the fourth player that um, like everybody gets 30% and I get 10% because I'm not really participating. Okay. So uh, I'm rooting for my team for my 10%. Let's go, boys. Uh, I'm not. I haven't played a single game, but uh, you know, could still make some money there. So. Did you just, you gotta be like, you guys better go deep. I ain't getting paid much otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely rooting for that. Oh, we'll see what they can do. I'm sure it'll be fun to check in on them to round out the day. But for now, we need to round out this series. Remember, folks, the the way that this bracket is playing out is Chinese hopes can be kept alive. Of course, FYF are the full Chinese stack. There's still three kingdoms in the same bracket that are currently clashing with DKN, the Divine DFP team. But we'll focus on this one. We talked about the lack of wood on this map and how it... I, I think we originally made out that it's going to cripple the Roost player potentially, force him to go Knights only, so he'll, he'll find a way to survive. But it should eventually hurt the Ottoman players. We didn't really talk about how much it can hurt the Abbasa player as well, though. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, we didn't, I didn't really think about it as much. I, I felt like, okay, the Ottoman players are just going to eat through the wood lines. Mm. But um, Abbasa also uh, enjoys his fair share of wood usually. Yeah, you're thinking like, you know, that, that sometimes they like going in the stables, sometimes they like going into the racks, but either way, they're, they're going to spam units that will cost wood. In smaller amounts, yes, but it, it adds up quickly. And let's say you feel very defensive, maybe you have to go farms earlier, it doesn't feel good anyway. Uh, maybe you want to go multi-TC. Once again, that that's a lot of wood. Right, yeah. I think um, I would expect oh, just adding one TC. I don't think you should add more than that because you're just going to get overwhelmed. And, um, you know, it's an open, aggressive map, so it's hard to get away with Greed. I'm wondering where he dropped that second TC. Like, I'm looking at Avli's layout. Maybe northwest of his base, between the tree line and the berries could be the way to go. But that's his initial wood, right? So, like, ah, oh man. Actually, that spawn looks brutal. Mm. Like, wh wh where do you get extra wood here, right? Like, usually when you drop a TC, you're like, wood plus something else. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I would just uh, to the left of the stone between the berries and the trees. Yeah. And you just get both. Yeah. And it's also efficient because your vills are already on the stone there and uh, they're in that area anyway. So, yeah. We're perfect close showing. That's definitely where I would make it. Yeah, I agree. I think it has to be that way. And then you can still go back to stone afterwards. Maybe you secure your next wood lines with uh, like a keep drop. Maybe go in for some walls later on. We'll have to see though. First of all, we have to talk about the early game. Of course, it's going to just be a clash between two Ottoman players passively producing spears. I noticed that <laughs> straight away, instead of going aggressive himself, we're going to actually see a defensive element of play to open up here. As Orc says, I need yeah, to Yeah, it's pretty, pretty funny. The, the, the spears coming out at the same time. <laughs> like, oh, you're Ottoman as well. Okay. <laughs> oh, I see how this is. Okay. Well. <laughs> Hello there. Yeah. You're still kind of happy, though, if you're... Uh, were you? Because what you've essentially done is forced your opponent, to, the opposing Ottoman player rather, to defend, as opposed to, as going into your, your teammate's base and doing the same. Yep. However, you always want to be the aggressor, basically. Oh, he's pulling all the fills. He should just only pull the one. And a panicky reaction where you know you just want to pull one fill in that situation. It's just one spear. Yeah. Or just get your ships out. <laughs> Huh? One spear. Um, that's always fight? that's always the best solution. That, that, that's like hell yeah. I mean, guys, you want you're, you're, almonds... you're learning. Thank you, thank you. I mean, almond seem OP. Look at this passive spears. Yeah, there's only one of them. <laughs> Stab it, lol. <laughs> we do have H2 coming out uh, for Roos pretty quickly, actually. It's like Avli's getting a decent amount of sheep to work with. Like, that's one benefit he's going to have over every other player in this match. Right, get a decent amount of sheep, but then also these finite resources like the berries, you can inflate them. So you probably have to go farms at a later time to other players, which is important due to the lack of wood. Yeah, I think um, this is the sort of map that uh, you know farm transitioning can really kill you. Like if one person is still get it, being able to get at the berries, yep, which is more likely to be the um, the, the roost side of the team, I think. Like they will have more map control, yes. generally speaking. Um, like if you're forced to farm, farm transition in a game like this, that's often how you end up dying. 
it's, it's, I mean, it's a bit early to kind of like uh, grill on at this hard. Like, we'll have to see how he wants to play it. But it almost feels like they're one of the situations where if I was to tell you that Avalee's playing Delhi instead, right? Like, well, then he wins because he's Delhi. So. <laughs> There we go. I knew I was going to trigger it. But, but like, <laughs> even, even for, like, for real talk, right? Because then you're you're playing a tempo aggressive Civ and you're coming out of your base. So you will be able to get berries. But I, I, I struggle to see a way in which Avalee is going to be able to contribute towards the aggression in the early game. So where did uh, the Spears from Orc go? Because I was kind of uh, expecting one it to died. Uh, help defend him. Yeah, one died and the others went on a coffee break. I don't know. Maybe they got bribed by the, the other Ottoman player or something. Oh, they're gonna oh, kill no. that scout. Yeah, they're, they're definitely gonna kill him. You see how close they are to getting him, Marty? Mm -hmm. If they if they take yeah, duct tape and then tape together the spears, they could probably reach him. Yeah, I would just throw it at him at that point, to be honest. Uh, I think you'd like Marlins. Oh, that's actually a thing now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, I shouldn't have sport that for your series later. You just get in a game against Malian player, you're like, I feel really good, and then you just get spear hurled. You're like, oh, yeah, that's uh, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, these these knights and everything, it's it's so much pressure on Avali, and this is kind of what I was worried about, is that... Um, I, I think I mentioned this in the pregame, where Avali isn't able to just easily get his second DC safely. Like, it's yeah. going to be interrupted and delayed quite a bit. Um, and this, yeah, this feels really bad as Abbasid. Like, he, he will still get there, but, you know, everything's a little bit delayed. Oh, man. Orc, he was like, okay, we really need some help. I'm going to get the drummer boy straight away. That would be great if it wasn't for the fact that your mirrored opponent done the exact same thing. They both prioritized the early <laughs> meta for free, which means they now have the movement speed and attack speed equaled out. Oh, well, we talked about how you can come out of your base easier as FYF and play the map, and we're going to see that now. It's going to be a move out onto the ball for the Roost player. We'll cost them 100 wood to get the hunting cabin down, but worth what? And a slight mistake, we'll lose one of the villages in the process. Yeah, so what's massive here is not only is he getting the boar, um, they also managed to force Avely to be protective with his second DC, which is oh, now being pointed God. out. Like, his second DC, he really wanted to have it on the, on the, the left, where he would secure more resources, but now that he's just built it in base, as if he's putting China, um, like, that's all because of the pressure that he felt from the spirits and the knights. Mm -hmm. And the, like, being able to control natural resources, it's so often a game decider. So. Yeah, I think it's even more important for you to be the aggressor on Prairie than it is in 1v1s, because one thing to highlight is that sometimes you'll see in, in 1v1s in Prairie, you saw it in Rebel World Law, players would essentially negotiate territory in that they would build power save walls between wood lines. The gaps are so large and the tree lines seem to be so small in these generations. I don't think you can even do that. It almost feels not viable. Like some of the wood lines you'd secure, you've spent half that building up power save walls. Yeah, on a map like this, you just want to like chop and leave, basically. You don't want to <laughs> overcommit to defending it. Yeah, this night count is starting to get a bit spicy. Up to six toe for, of course, ready to keep raiding. Now, Avali, of course, does have that second TC, and he's only paying half price for his villages, so he's getting some bang for buck there. The problem he's going to have is after he's done with his initial resource deposits, he has to come out and play. And Avali right now doesn't really have a standing army to speak of. Yeah, and this is once again a situation where the, they want to go like bike bow. But they're getting cut off because the Knights has more tempo, more mobility. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have seen this so many times today already where like, they can't reinforce their army together. Like they're cut off from each other. And how do you how do you handle this situation? Like, because Orc is in this awkward place where he wants to send his army to help his teammates. But he, he's also at the risk of just, you know, getting overrun then. Yeah. Um, he's going to be forced to come oh, though. Uh, but, this... uh, but overall... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, is this really a fight that Orc can take? Like, his numbers look decent, but I feel like the Knights will turn this into a loss for him if he chooses to engage. Yeah, the, so this was the classic bait and switch. <laughs> like, Orc has managed to travel across to to help his mate out. And then the team is just like, well, now your base is open. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yes, is it time boys, to, to get the stoops out? out? There we go. Nice horseman yeah, raid, Lamau. 
So now his reinforcements are still cut off, just in a different way than he expected. Oh, but, um, Shiki forgot about waypointing. Oops. But, but this is big, like, just losing these two knights... That's that's already quite a momentum change, and then the um, like the ram is not getting anything done. Yeah. And you know, as much as I enjoy natural resources, you do have to remember that you know Avery is on that second PC. He is getting this vill lead, and even if you can't get a natural resources, like you know, if you just have that many more vills, there is room to farm transition as well. And this so, is also the the delicate element of having one player with cav and one with static units. It's like you're seeing the moment that Shiki started running elsewhere, his te teammate Wuyu just had to walk away, right? He had to play very defensive because he would have got jumped by the two remaining players. Right. And uh, I like what Orc has done here. He's kind of just made this fully functional composition himself, like rather than... Uh, you know, waiting on your ally spikes or whatever. He's just making bikes and bows himself, mm -hmm. so he can he can move uh, like move around just by him, by, by himself. Yeah. Well, well. Army count is starting to look healthy for Avali, although he's leaning harder to archers, so he's going to need to find more wood soon. And the pressure does continue to mount on him. Aram would love to sneak in and say hello to that town center. Remember that is a secondary TC. It's only 2400 HP. Not too hard for Ram to deal with. And um, in the meantime, Avery, I think, is building up this horseman uh, mess quietly. Oh. And I think... Well, uh, it's... It, is, defended. is he going to get pinched? Yeah, he's going to get... That's my worry there. Because you notice that, right? Like, when he, when he was trying to regather his army, like, he was retreating away from a faster archibald. So he chose to group the, the meta together. And that meant that the second contingent ran underneath the TC. And Avery and Orc wrapped in from both sides. Wait, they slept the oh, I think there's a lot of Vils dying, by the way, because Avalis' team is quite far behind in Vils despite being up at yeah. DC. It's not just that. They also got sniped on the meta. So now, like you, if you push for this assault, even against like an Ottoman player who's 1v2ing, that attack speed and movement speed will allow Wuyu to come out ahead. Damn. I feel like we've missed some sort of big raid somewhere i think it's um, been constant I... on the the wood lines right because if you look at the ottoman base he already exhausted his initial wood line and he's built nothing to defend the second one and... those horsemen remembered what happened to their brothers <laughs> they, they, they did not they run run in. In. <laughs> there's just like horse carcasses there with flies on them rotting it's like what happened here like wouldn't you yeah, like to know just carving their knives like you want to come for play yeah, the Vils, like, they were just saying to the Vils, like, you know what, just go back to woodcutting, mate. It's all good. Do you know what it is? They just turn up, and there's just the villagers, like, wrapped around a fire, eating horse meat. They're like, what the hell happened here? <laughs> you don't want to know. Just leave. So, um, in the meantime, we have Avelis team building up a significant, like, mass advantage. Uh, like, they're both yeah. going archers, but the... I feel like the horsemen, like, like aside from the fact that they're raiding, at some point, there will be um, there will be like a significant uh, horseman group that will just start cleaning up the, the archers from uh, from what is it orange. Yeah, it's so so like to, to the point around the horsemen. If you look at the count, you can see the core issue here. Like usually, horsemen look good when you have double the horsemen knights. Oh well, one of those two things is doubling the other. It's just not the way you need it to be. Like, the knight count is incredibly healthy for Shiki. So unless you can bait him into running his poor little horses into a line of pikes, this is never going to turn around. Yeah, but, well, the problem that I'm seeing is that the... Like, because of the ro the Roost Nightmares, they've decided to counter that with Spears. But mm. they haven't made... They haven't really made any pike mess to deal with the horsemen. And I think... Um, if I'm seeing correctly, they're currently at 17 horsemen, so I think this orange army could get completely surrounded by, um, by Avely. Uh, I'm going to break your pleasurable desire. Oh, well, seven. There. Yeah, it's Never seven, Hardy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, now, now you don't well, believe so much in the, the Avely uh, turnabout, nope. right? <laughs> nope. <laughs> don't mind anything I said. <laughs> that's, some, that's some cooked books like you're playing Chinese right there. Like, yeah, this is the real number. No. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, like, if he did have 16 horsemen, you're completely correct. Like, it's very dangerous for Wu Yu. But remarkably, Shiki's well, done is, a great job of keeping that number down. The thing is, I saw him being at, like, 8 or 9 horsemen earlier, and I felt like, okay, he's just slowly building up this mess, but I, I guess he was losing them to the to the knights. 
Yeah, because you get chasing them and then you get turned around. Let's not forget how many villagers managed to kill horsemen as well. <laughs> Can't underrate that important detail. It feels like two raids were just shut down by villagers alone. There's knights. I mean, there's uh, some spears here, but I don't think there's enough to deter them. They're going to keep diving. In the meantime, the main battle is going to be won now by Wu Yu. The pushback orc problem here. He doesn't have a meta again. There's one in production, but there's none here. He did at least snipe out and return, so Wu Yu didn't have his in the composite anymore, but he's got a second meta already on the way, so orange Ottoman player now clearly ahead. Yeah, and uh, this is just the mobility kicking in for the knights. Like, uh, he's, he's pulling them everywhere. Well, there's maybe a backstab coming in, but Avali needs to be quick before the entire Ottoman army gets traded. At which point this backstab counts for literally nothing. Okay. Really, um... uh, the meta's coming, right? Yeah, okay, this is a bad, bad idea now for Avali. <laughs> yeah, horsemen in that small number just got killed. And, um... I was impressed with uh, Shiki there in particular. I think uh, he was running like three different cap groups yep. and uh, ending the fight well. And he's been on point. Like, you mentioned that he was going to play a discount French, and he's definitely proven that although it sounds like it's a discount French, it doesn't look like that in practice. Great performance by him to make this game look so comfortable and easy for him. And Avli says, when I'm this uncomfortable, there's only one thing that can save us. A little bit of greed. He's gone up for Castle Age. Maybe the last opportunity to turn this around. A good one as well, because if you can get the initial wooden gold together, most of what you're facing will be countered by one or two Maganels. Yeah, I, I kind of like this because of, you know, it feels like a game is slowly falling out of your grip, so you want to make something happen, so he's going to try to do something in Castle Age. But I'm mostly curious, like, what exactly is he going to do? Yeah, I, I'm still feeling like it has to be Maganels, but, but I'm worried, like, do you even have enough wood for that? Like, where, where are you getting wood right now? Like, genuinely, I, I'm i looking at the map and I just don't... I don't see any wood. Is it the northern corner? Maybe? <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, I don't God. think a Manganel would do great. I don't think you could protect it against the knights. No. Okay, yeah, so it's just half and copium and getting more berries. <laughs> oh no, this is the yeah. worst feeling. When you're on the ferry, uh, final berry patch and you've got too many villagers and you don't realize because none of them are showing as idle that they're just queuing to grab berries. Oh, yeah, it's horrible when they don't show up as idle. Oh, man, but rams are in. They're not going to wait around to say if Avli went up, that means he doesn't really have units yet. And even if he starts building cavalry, we still have enough heavy cavalry units to swarm and kill. Nice maneuvering by Shiki. Now the push-in will continue. Rams are going to force a house situation. Archer army trading out in favor of Wu Yu. And would you like to just GG out, he says to Orc, because this is looking insurmountable at this stage. Yeah, it's just another game where the uh, mobility advantage seems to be winning. Uh, Matter not being in the right group, I guess. But, um, you know, just we, we keep on seeing this uh, knight archer composition beat bike archer composition, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think it's much easier to, to manipulate the map when it's 2v2 and above as well, right? Like knights, the extra mobility adds up. You know, if your opponent's out of position, they're much further out of position than they are in a 1v1. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they, for example, at the, at the start when the... Um, was it when Orc went to help Avali, they just switched it on to the other base, and you can so easily maneuver back and forth like that. Yeah. Well, they won't call it just yet. They say, no, 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 this this is it. This will be the end of the road for us, but yeah. I don't, I don't think wanna... it's over. To be... I don't think it's over at all. You don't think it's that, that close to done right now? I mean, have you seen Orc's base? I mean, I, I know it look, it's looking rough, but I don't think it's that over. Like... You know, if, if he managed to get a good fight there with these spikes against the knights, and there's also so his own knights in the mix killing the archers. I mean, oh, he just doesn't seem to have access. There's just so many archers still here from Wu Yu, just enough. Knights are going to peel back, but even if you push him back now, the damage done to your base is hard to repair. Looks like more archers are going to arrive to counter out the remaining spears. Count looking good for Shiki still at the end of this fight. Even if his knights get cleaned up, it's going to be a, a, a net neutral in terms of exchange. But instead, it's going to favor them entirely. Spearmen all gone. Only a small group of archers remaining, and no real base to speak of for Orc. He lost all the military schools. He'll have nothing to produce out of here. And anything he would produce out of remaining is going to be slow because he also lost the blacksmiths. 
Yeah, it's definitely looking rough. Like I was saying, this game looks pretty over. <laughs> yep, that's definitely what you said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that that's how I like. If that, I wish that was on the other team to define true desperosity. I love that Shiki has to send like a hundred wood over to Wu Yu, so you can definitely see how they were kind of like thinly walking this line, right? Because we mentioned Wu was going to be a limitation on both sides, and this was a big investment by Wu Yu. Nine hundred wood on a wood limited map into those rams. What I actually like about uh, Bruce here with the limited wood is that you can also just consider buying it in the yeah, golden gate. That's true. And you have a, we used to talk about that, that we took at the start, like that big gold stack you always get. I love the fact that behind all this, right, even if this backfired, Shiki had gone for a second TC. And I think he went on to wood, which weirdly enough was taken away by Wu Yu. <laughs> actually, check behind the Bruce base. It looks so comical the way that TC got set up by the Bruce player. Like his, his teammate literally just walked across. No, no, west side, southwest side. He walked across. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, no, this is not your wood. I need this. I'm building the archers. Get out. Yeah, and it, it makes a lot of sense when, um, like, we, we talk so much about this limited wood, and that's also partly why you should play a Sif combo where one person is not relying on the wood. And I think on the other side, we saw both players going for archers. Which also uh, like caused this boot to run out even quicker. Yeah. Oh my god, These, the remaining archers coming out from Wu Yu are still sniping even more villagers. Avali says, I'm doing alright. Hey, Orc, have food. That's definitely what you need to rebuild your destroy base. Just just food, right? Orc's like, can I get some wood? No, no, no. Nobody gets wood here. There's none on the map. I need it all. Deal with your own problems, you cheapskate. We'll find a way to tech up though, credit to him. The Altman player is mirroring this, but that does mean that Shiki is now, is now still hard stuck in Feudal. And considering he wants to keep producing more Knights, that's going to remain the same, but now that he sees that Camel Riders are coming out, maybe he rethinks the strategy here and goes for his own castle up. Yeah, I think as Bruce here, you kind of want to just go 8 street so you can tech up your Knights, get all the relics, take the Sacred Sites, all that good stuff. But, um... I think they probably feel like, okay, we're in such a dominant position, I just want to kind of close this game out. So he just keeps on producing units instead. Is it me or do Camel Riders have bigger hitboxes than Lancers? Not I think that I noticed. It kind of looks like, like they're definitely on the models it looks bigger. And I, I feel like I more often see Camel Riders trying to, I don't know, mate in the middle of fights where they rub on each other than, than Knights do. Hmm. I just think because like in some, so, some situations that could become a problem, right? Because it means you're spreading out, like when you spread out your lines, you possibly have less units attacking the other party. You know, the weird thing about this game is like, even now I'm just not 100% convinced it's over. It's because of Avali, right? Like, like yeah, sure, Orc is, feels dead, but Avali has yeah. miraculously found some way to revitalize himself. I mean, whenever I say this, then like two seconds later, all these villages are losing a ton of build. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it, it's also just the fact that, um, like the the opponent's team, the uh, like Cheeky and I don't know how to pronounce Orange's name. Uh, Wu Yu. Um, Wu Yu. Okay. Well, they they haven't really changed their composition at all, and I think archers at this point of the game kind of become pretty bad because you're, yes. you're just kind of running into knights and losing them. Maybe you um, just naturally so, switch now, right? Because you're like, well, the wood's running out, so now it's time to maybe go for like some sort of food gold heavy composition instead. Maybe go for my own knights as an Ottoman player. I think I see uh, he's going like Janissaries now, so... Okay, I, yeah. That's the goal. I, I mean, that's, that's definitely the right way to go. In fact, wait. Did did he just build them? He must have just built them, right? And I think he... Oh, he's going to... So he's going to use the Vizier points after he builds the extra TCs to spawn... Wait, no, it's based on military schools, right? So I think, yeah, the reason he has Jan Seri is used that, right? So he got the... Uh, I forget the name of the visit, the, the council point. But basically, it spawns two Jan Seri's per military school that you have. Right. Yeah, I think... I mean, he's transitioning his composition now, which is, like, the main thing he had to do. I think he was kind of stuck on making arches for a little bit too long. But now that he's transitioning, I think that will be the uh, deciding factor. Yeah. Close to that. As Vodka could just shoot, yeah. Basically, the way it works is there's a tech that allows you per military school to one-off get two Janissary per military school, um, which if you wait until pre-related is like 10, but 
it, it's usually used, used it a lot earlier. Like, I like to think of it as a, a counter-attack, right? It's, it's something I really love is that kind of element they've added to the game. Like, oh, I'm behind, but this could be, like, my my trap card when you dive my base. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, it's not like Roos has, you know, managed to gather all the relics and stuff. And Avery still has all this momentum in his favor. So, like, maybe he can hold out 1v2 long enough for uh, Orc to get back into it. <laughs> this is going to take quite a while. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I have a funny feeling about this game. I just don't feel like it's over. I, I don't think it's over, but I think Uruk right now, like it, it's really a deep competition between who looked more screwed, Flash in game two or Uruk in game three. Oh, definitely Flash. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> as he was pre-done. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it it doesn't feel as far off, right, as you'd think. Like like Uruk, he's found a way to rescale. But now it's like, what do you build into? Because it feels like whatever you're going for, you're going to be a step behind the Altman player. Um, because, you know, it's not just the case that like you're teched up behind, he's now catching up with that. It's the fact that your production is going to be so far behind. I mean, just look at the Janissary count. By the time Urk can start building this unit, Wuyu's going to have 20 plus Janissary. Oh, I mean, he's definitely behind on the Altman player, like no doubt. But mm. like if Avery is far enough ahead, then you, know, true. you could compensate for that. One thing I like, one issue I have with Avery's uh, composition is it's all countered by Janissary, though. <laughs> you notice that, right? Yeah, like Avery has to go like uh, four different units at this point. Like he has to really, you know, do everything. And, and like, what's the but, counter Janissary? You, you build archers. That, that's one of the most logical ones. But there's no wood. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just, I'm just feeling something here. Okay, like. You're <laughs> Don't care about the logic. No, I respect it. I respect the, it. Like, there's a way there's that they can win There's this. something going on here. And you're just, just going to have to witness it, you know? Look, there's a just way they can do this, it. but I cannot deny the fact that this Janissary mass basically counters everything they're doing. They need to find a way to get oh, Magnus. You can deny it. You can deny it. Just be with me. Just deny it. Got it. Just imagine that gun, guns don't exist. That's always worked well for exactly. people in history. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, charge, man! Get your swords out! God, my lord, they've got guns! What are a gun? Go, you idiot! Never bring a sword to a gunfight. Famous quotes. But a knife? Yeah, you know, if you're good enough for that. So what we're saying is you counter giant series with villagers. There you go. That's the, uh, that's the answer we need. Look, he's got all these units. He's got a keep to defend himself. Everything is just fine. The problem is, I know you genuinely mean it, but the more you say it like that, the less believable it sounds. <laughs> You're just the dog yeah, the in the problem. room on fire at that point. Like, it's fine. It's it's totally fine. Yeah, it's a problem that I have that I'm just I'm sarcastic so often that when I'm saying something that I mean, it's like impossible anymore at that point. I have this issue too. Like, it's, it's, there's one thing our spirits do really well, too well. It's sarcasm to the point that, they, that people can't understand that it's sarcasm. Well, according to Marine Lords, I'm British as well, so... Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, historically, like, if you go far enough back, like, you know, between England and, like, Lowlands and France, like, I don't know who's who anymore, to be honest. No, I like what Orc is trying here. I think he also went second TC. Uh, maybe he's being fed some resource by Avely. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, trying to get back into this game economically. And because Avery is most likely already close to being maxed out on Phil, so look at all yeah. this idle time he's causing on these farms. He's and... doing a lot of work. Yeah, well, he probably doesn't have a lot of home to defend, but like, if we could just imagine this orange army dying, and he's doing a lot of work. Yeah, the, the issue here is, like, one thing I respect about Wu Yu is he's, he's looked at this and gone, okay, so I can't beat dynamic raids if I just chase you as Benny Hills. So instead he dives. He dives deep and... It looks like he's thrown away pricey units. But remember these Janissaries, you know, not as pricey as you think. And also, he did get the the outfits, so he's able to build these passively in the military schools as well. And guaranteed, we use job right now is just to build a million Janissaries. Oh, and I like the ram on the TC as well. That's yeah. always a power play. You can't get me out of here, so I'm just going to build it right under your nose. I think the problem that Avery has is that the keep is on the wrong Wait. place. I think. Wait, is he? Okay, no, no, sorry, I, was, I got baited by the health bar. It looked like he was actually losing the ram to TC fire, which made no sense. Continue. <laughs> so he made the skip uh, a bit to the right, but it's not, it's not really guarding anything, I believe. 
Um, and he really wanted to be the aggressor, well, you know, then you have to keep at home to defend. Mm -hmm. But because the keep isn't in, the, in his base, he had to actually fall back. Yeah. Now, the, the other thing, by the way, I won't give a lot of credit to, to Wii for understanding he could dive this deep and the value of it. Like, you're up against a melee comp. What's the best way to win with ranged is to create choke points. And ironically enough, he's been using his opponent's base against him, which is why you didn't see Avali dive deep in, because he wouldn't be able to use all of his military at once. At the end of the day, like, um, you know, Avali was probably maxed out on Vils, yes. so he can just reproduce them now. And, you know, the, the value that he got in terms of army, he, he got so much more than the other way around. Definitely. I think that was like 30 Janissaries lost for Wuyu. And although he's got passive reduction, that's still going to sting. He did at least buy time, and this is where the ripple effect can happen. The Knights are back out in the field from Shiki. And once again, Orc is going to keep his head stuck in the dirt. He's never seen to get yeah, out. And this is kind of... This is decision time for Avely. Do I go to my teammate or do I go to uh, Orange's base now? And I think you kind of have to make something happen. So I would probably go aggressive here. Mm -hmm. but, you maybe uh, go to the Roost the... base instead. Just because if, if you run into the Orange base, you're, you're playing into the Janissary mass, right? On the defensive. But the, the mass has just been killed. Like it's pretty somewhat small now. And mm. I think you could you could manage to clean it up. You also have a Mangana on the mix. That's true. Was the player. Interestingly enough, Avali chose to opt into Springle. Didn't even bother Maganels of his own. So it's just the Ottoman players building those mangoes right now. I do believe that Shiki has been picking up the relics, though. I think he's the only player to do this so far. So long term gold is going to be there for him. Yeah, it's battle. definitely uh, still looking rough. But I'm still a believer a little bit. I mean, Avali right now is carrying this game hard. It is, or he got decimated so quickly that it has to be on the Abbasid player. It's just a case of... Yeah, so I mean, Avali carrying here, it, it doesn't mean that Orc did a mistake or something. It's just no. kind of how team games can, can go sometimes. Exactly. Think about the, the last game where Flash basically got sold downriver by his team. Yeah. Alright. It's that type of situation. There's I don't no feel like Avali I... sold, sold Orc out. Uh, what did you see? The spear count? I, I remember he was building some, but I didn't realize just how many. He's up to 40 spears and knights. It's got to be said, right? The last fight we saw was just the Ottoman player versus the Abbasid player. Something they haven't tried so far is just going back to how they start this game and 2v1ing. Oh, you can 2v1 in a team game? I think so. I don't know. Like, may maybe mm. if you're like, there's a certain map that if you play, I think that that's, that doesn't work very well. But this isn't that map, no. I think jousting feels maybe a little bit more difficult for that. Oh, that one. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Unless you pick Mongols. Right, so oh, I'll... my God! All right, we're eating, all right, put your bibs on, boys. We're eating camel tonight. <laughs> yeah, that was a massive cleanup. Remember how much camel and cavalry Avali had? He now has four camel archers. I mean, that's just the game. I, I, we believed in Avali coming back time and time again. You can't tell me you can fix this that quickly. Oh, the uh, believing has stopped. <laughs> My copium canisters ran out. When I see yeah. the guy I'm, I'm rooting for charge his entire cavalry battalion into a spear line, I tend to lose faith. And he's trying to get a desperation keep, as I call it up, to defend him. That's not going to work. Even Orc has been like, no, oh, those cavalry units were looking really good for you. He regrets building any of them whatsoever. They're not going to be successful. And, you know, although it's not going to be a quick death, you definitely feel like Avali, by the time he rebuilds this army, Will you can have the counter. In fact, you can see how he's already diversified. Crossbows, Janissary, and Men at Arms. Yeah, it's not going to happen anymore. Like, he had to keep, keep that military advantage at all times to be able to um, get something done. But now that it's been cleaned up, you know, he's I mean, not going to outproduce one eco against two. Maybe, like, uh, th maybe there's a process here. Maybe if, like, Avali has enough units, like poor horses and camels die quick enough, we get like DMCA pull down, or not DMCA, but someone equivalent by Pedder, right? And at that point, we're like, well, the game can't happen anymore. Restart, go again. I like how Avely's training scouts, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I've like, seen that. <laughs> like, this feeds into my pet theory. Like, if enough animals die quick enough, they will shut us down. 
When you're trading scouts, then you know you're in, in trouble. Like, you're out of wood, out of gold. Like, you know what? I'm gonna train some scouts. <laughs> you know, hear me out. You trade wing, you get armored caravans. Like, our trade is more efficient to trade than scouts. You mean, like, to tank? Yeah, yeah, to tank. The extra five armor, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're probably pretty tanky with five armor, no? I think it depends pretty on the pretty. unit they're against. Like, spears would do too much bonus damage. So it comes down to how many strikes it takes, right? Like, if you're up against archers, 100% they're better than scouts. Didn't they nerf the bonus damage from spears to traders? I think they did, yeah. So, like, I can't remember if there's any unit that gets bonus damage anymore. But, like, so any unit that's base damage is low against traders. Like, traders, for the abassas, because they're cheaper, would be better tanks with armored caravans than scouts. Yeah, I still wanna, I still wanna play a game of um, tanky raiders now. It, it will happen. Uh, I'm so yeah. like you, you began the discussion on earlier today, and now I'm just like I'm doubling down for you. <laughs> it's like we're fury crafting it out. Scouts cost seventy food. A basset traders cost, I believe it's fifty of each, so hundred total. Ninety health versus is it one ten? I believe, but you get five extra armor compared to scouts. I mean, that, that, that yeah. sounds like a good damn deal. As long as you're not up against hand cannons. Oh, it, it will just be like a game where I'm like trying to ram rush or something, and I will just send <laughs> 20 traders into the enemy TC to tank the TC. Like, you will Got catch em. a game like that soon enough, I, I promise you. Imagine just getting more armor than like a French knight. Easy piece. In five armor, five ranged armor, that's pretty good to tank TCs. Yeah, our blue trios have to stand still to get that. My armored caravan can move as much as it wants. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. And um, one more thing that uh, I wanted to mention about this this game, because I um, kind of felt like this uh, this drafting here was better with the ruse. Mm -hmm. um, we we mentioned this earlier today, but you always got to remember that this is the siding game, which means you're deeper into your shift pool. Yes. Mm, yeah. You don't just have every pick available to you most of the time. Yeah, I believe uh, the side of Mao opened up with like a French pick. In the first game rights so that wasn't available to them. Uh, I believe Mongols came out for the side of FYF, so they didn't have that available. So, you, I'd say uh, the best picks you can get for Prairie. Oh boy. Well, we saw the Janissaries look like they should count the cavalry before. Uh, not at this scale, though. That, I think, was that was that like a desperation play? Did he even use the, the Vizier Council, maybe? Maybe. It doesn't matter. Either way, they finally admit defeat. Orc has been beaten down so many times. Every time he stands up, he gets haymaker to the ground, and he's finally KO'd. Looks like Mao's journey will end here. FYF will have a shot at the main event as they head through to the deciding round. And if I'm orange here, I'm definitely shooting a match that's to flash. Like, no problem for the carry, by the way. <laughs> Don't die like that, <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah yeah I, I can tell which type of player you're on team games you're you're 100 the woo you the the full imperial booms greed in game two and then uh it comes back like this in the third it's like flash yeah baby, and, and then doing? just take full credits yeah. <laughs> yeah you like ignore what flash done in game one like pff, i don't know what you're talking about <laughs>